Wait, Spider-Man's the son of the tiger from Life of Pi? I'm Richard Parker's son. Peter Parker, you do have secrets. Life of Pi. So Life of Pi is directed by Ang Lee, and it's the story of a kid named Pi. Actually, his name is Pissing. He shortened it to Pi for obvious reasons. And the story unfolds in a way where he's older now, and he's telling his life story to a guy. He's telling the story of when his family was moving from India to Canada, and then this big ship sinks, and there were a lot of animals on the ship because they owned a zoo. Pi ends up in a lifeboat, so now it's just Pi and a tiger named Richard Parker. And now this is our story. Our story is the time in which this kid, Pi, was stuck in this lifeboat with this tiger. That could be really awesome or it could be boring as hell. Luckily, it's not that second one. Life of Pi is really interesting and I heard that Life of Pi is just an unfilmable book. You can't translate the book to a movie but how often have we heard that? We're coming up on 2013 now. There's really nothing we can't do on the big screen. Now granted, how it's executed will either make it feel like a big CGI shit fest or you use the special effects and technology to help tell the story in which case it actually enhances it or at least makes it filmable. That's Life of Pi. Visually, Life of Pi is really impressive. It's one of those movies where it's like, oh yeah, it's 3D, but well played. The 3D was actually really cool and the visuals were just out of this world. Like the scene when that ship is sinking and it shows Pi under the water and he's looking at this humongous tanker just sink. It was almost haunting. It's like something nightmares are made from. It was done really well. It was just like one of those visual things where I was like, yeah, I wanted to see that in a movie. I wanted to see a tanker sink, but see it underwater. Life of Pi gave me that. Now the meat of this story is the relationship between Pi and Richard Parker, this tiger. Giving the tiger a name makes him more of a character than he should have been. You could have just had, oh, tiger and Pi. But unless they really pulled a big trick out of a hat, it probably would have felt like a tiger and our character. Naming him Richard Parker gives it a boost to make him an actual character. Then establishing and carrying on a relationship between Richard Parker and Pi, just, yeah, the tiger's a character. He never talks. It's not corny or anything like that. It's not like he has a voice. He's an animal, which makes it more impressive. Now, when I say relationship, I don't mean, oh, yeah, they're friends. They're not really friends. They're more or less nemesis -ses 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 -ses. nemesis -ses. That's how you say it, right? They are each other's nemesis, there you go. And the whole while they're playing this territory game on this lifeboat, it's a relationship of conflict and necessity, which let's face it, is a hundred times more interesting than any relationship of love. I see a relationship like this, like making a sword. You beat the shit out of it, you heat it, you cool it, you smash it, you bend it, but in the end you have this awesome tempered steel sword that's stronger because it went through that. That's a relationship of conflict and that is Life of Pi, or at least one of the elements in Life of Pi. And on this, you have a coming of age story. It's kind of like if I had to describe Life of Pi, it would be Castaway, meets a kid in a lifeboat with a tiger. There's really not much like it out there. But I enjoyed seeing the conflict between Pi and this tiger. I enjoyed the territory war that they had with each other. I enjoyed seeing how one needed the other to really survive. But they never made it cheesy, you know? They never made it like, oh, hey, me and the tiger, we're pals. So Life of Pi is a really well done coming of age story. Visually, it's impressive as hell. It's one of those movies that shows, yes, you can use the technology of our time to make a really interesting and visually appealing movie without making it a CGI shit fest. Life of Pi for a rated PG movie is actually a little darker than you think it's gonna be. And it's a bit thicker too. I don't know like, you know, a 10 year old that will be interested in the entire movie. It's a movie that's made for teenagers, older teenagers and adults that happens to be rated PG. I will say Life of Pi is worth buying on Blu-ray. All right, so your favorite coming of age story, Life of Pi, being a coming of age story, I think it's an appropriate question. Whatever it is, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.